Shadowverse. Greetings, I'm Shad, and I have met a friend of the channel. This is Nate V from Sword Savvy. How are you, mate? I'm going good, Shad. How's your day been so far oh, at the festival? Heaps of fun. So we were actually just going around, checking out each of the reenactment camps. We're here at the Cryle Castle Medieval Festival. And then I ran into this gentleman. It's like, I, I, I know you. I know you from somewhere, but it's grown a beard, and I was having trouble recognising. And then as soon as you said Nate, I was like, mate, how are you? Now, Nate has a really great video, and this is how I found your channel, actually, on drawing Drawing a sword from your back. Mm -hmm. This has been a bit of a passionate subject of mine. You might even recognize I'm wearing my back scabbard right now because it's fun. You know, people get a kick out of seeing it in person. Uh, and Nate, so now that I'm with you in person, we can actually see your method right here. And I want to kind of get, uh, like, basically, by seeing it in person, I can see the benefits, the drawbacks, and how well it works. And it actually works really, really well. So do you want to explain it? Uh, sure. So it's taking basically a normal belt that you wear around your waist <laughs> and slinging it over your shoulder. Instead of doing what most people would think and slinging it over the right shoulder to draw it right-handed where you just you run out of arm yeah, yep, room yep. instead you use the full length of your body and you do have to pull down a little bit to get it you use the full length of your body to actually just draw the whole thing it does have some mm -hmm. disadvantages because if you don't draw it right it does come across the throat i covered a lot of these yeah yeah, yeah. in the video but it's, it's um, fast and natural it can be very fast i didn't do it fast yeah. then, but it can be very fast and it's very smooth to put back which i know is a big thing <laughs> yes shabbat. yes well well the shabbat it takes practice and i actually this one is harder to put back than my wooden one my wooden one i got to the point where it's like bang straight in well, with this one, I do fiddle around. So if I wanted to test it and draw out the sword right there, so it's like that, but usually I need to guide it in with my hand. And so if I wanted to try to go in blind and try and do it, uh, there we go. Yeah, and so it can be much easier at times, also sometimes really fiddly. <laughs> no, it's, same. it's like when I go for mm -hmm. this, one of the reasons that I actually do that is to yes. draw and to put mm -hmm. it back. Same as like, as you know, grabbing a sword yes. from your side, you grab the sheath. Yes, yeah, you grab the sheath first. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's really quick, and so by grabbing it, sh just show you how quickly you could do it. Like, uh, so once that's actually dead, there, it's, bang, it's straight away, out. straight away. And some of the advantages, you are drawing it in kind of like a guard position. Yes, so you can, so I've found at least with this, mm -hmm. I can draw into a ward. I'm not going to draw it as quick, mm -hmm. but I can draw into a ward, but I need to step back into it. Yes. So it's more stepping away from your opponent to make sure you have that extra range, mm -hmm. which then you're in a proper ward. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. And so I, I had this discussion with Scarlagrim a bit about what guard position can you really adopt with the back scabbard that I have here. And one of the ones is, is Wrath. You could guard, so you grab it and you're straight and you're into Wrath and you're ready to go you aren't presenting the sword forward and so if you're already getting attacked that would be the limitation with this one but still as soon as you get it on guard they they would want to like be cautious because you're you're ready to just go straight down and then it's exactly that mm -hmm. as you know half of sword fighting is your footwork so if, yes. you're not, if you're doing your footwork at the point of draw you've got just as much of an advantage as anybody else that's exactly right because yeah if they're coming in and you just withdraw and you're drawing it and you're ready to go uh you cover most of your bases, oh. yeah. And and so, how comfortable is that in terms of just hanging? Very. Actually, Very? So I've found, as I was joking with Shad before, i found as I've been wearing it around the belt through the festival, I've been getting caught on little bits and pieces, especially mm. seeing as I would have to put it back on, but it does mm. hang out like a tail, hangs mm. quite out. Or I hang it completely sideways, but then it hangs this way. Whereas here, I can actually just do this and walk mm. around the entire festival with ah, okay. no, yeah, no fear mm. of anything. And it's really, I know there's the entire someone could draw it mm -hmm. but I mean if you try to draw that I'm gonna oh, like yeah you, you're you're holding on to that yeah. I wonder if I can do that with this if I could hold it yeah, you just pull I could probably could you're absolutely I'm gonna try that out in, in just a second uh, the other observation because right, you pointed out that you're using your hand to keep it in place but guess what when a sword is on your side you usually do that anyway and, and so you oftentimes hold your side scabbard uh, in place just like you're doing there and so it's not it, that's going completely kind of equivalent utility to hold it hold it there uh, one of the things that I find in wearing this because uh, I'm wearing this all day okay and uh, so this looks amazing not apart from looking awesome it's actually really comfortable yes. like I have worn this on my side and the weight is all hanging there and it's actually quite uncomfortable mm -hmm. and it's pulling down and then because this sword is so big actually drawing the sword you run into the same issue that if, you know, with the c complaints about a regular backscabbard. I to really stretch, I can barely get it out of a side one. And so when it comes to swords this big, this is when 
a backstab is actually really functional and and useful. And that is one of the, I guess, shortfallings I find with your method because you can get away with what you do and it works brilliantly, but when it comes to really big swords, you might be yeah. in a bit of trouble. You do, you've got to pull it down your shoulder and then you're yeah. really fixing it up. So it doesn't quite work with big, big swords, but the, the mm -hmm. one advantage I like about this is this doesn't take any customization. Yes, it's that's absolutely right. Just mm -hmm. So, but it's each of their own. It's like mm -hmm. wearing it on your hip or wearing it on your back. There's pros and cons to both. Yeah, you are absolutely right about customization because this is probably one of the main reasons why I don't don't think it was done often historically, even though I do feel there is a lot of you sorry utility and benefit to it. It requires making a completely custom machine, yes. and therefore you're going out of your way expensively uh, to justify something that, honestly, if you do prefer it, right? It, it can, oftentimes it can work just as well on the on the side, and the most convenient way to carry a sword is right through the belt. If you have a sheath, you don't need to attach it; you just slip it through the belt, and, and that's become the default because it's just so easy and anyone can do it. And and that's the big limitation. But when you if you had the money and you really like the benefits, well, then that's when I think you know an actual back scabbard like this really works out. Just like that. But when it's like this, I can wear this all day, and and I'm doing something different, right? Uh, usually I have a baldric, uh, like a full leather baldric, mm -hmm. which is hanging from. But I've realised that um, the guy who made it was really good. He made it more like I guess. Um, modifiable uh, modular he made it modular oh, yeah yeah okay. and so the guy who made it his business is called uh, of blades and blazers and he made it to be able to detach from the baldric but the attachment method me meant that i could actually attach it to the straps of my brigandine just as easy so if you come in close you see the strap here right there you see that's where it's hanging now and so i don't even need the baldric and this is even more comfortable as a result because it's hanging off the entire um, breastplate yeah. and the weight is it's distributed all distributed and everything and so it's actually really comfortable and I can barely feel it and then I can wear it all day and I actually feel this is more convenient wearing on my back than if I had such a big sword on my side because on the side it would stick out way way further I'd have to hang it on a, at a steeper angle and then I, now you don't have to be mindful but I just like hang it up keep an eye on it and I can get through doors and uh, it's pretty darn convenient it is yeah yep. there's a lot of convenience to having it on the back but mm -hmm. not for every situation yeah but like I said wearing it on the side I already went now I'm taking off my sword <laughs> you saw me before when Chad caught up with me before mm -hmm. I caught up with Chad um, I was just wearing a dagger because wearing a sword on the side was literally becoming too inconvenient. Yes. <laughs> they are big things. They get in the way. And again, one of the, my favorite things about that is that you don't need to modify anything. You could just take it up and, and if it, the sword is the right size, straight over that shoulder and you're good to go. You're good. So could I see how it's connected to the belt here? Sure. So this is just... It's not, this is what's called a reenactment knot. It's not a historical thing, but a lot of us do it. Mm -hmm. This is just literally belted through its own loop and then what's called a reenactment knot, which is putting the loop behind and tucking it in like that just to create a little more of an aesthetic. And that's it. And then the connection is just a normal connection. Oh, yeah, but that's a period. Yeah, that is a period connection. And that actually makes it go on an angle a little bit more, which makes it even more convenient. So the period connection is that he has a, oh, it connects higher up, and then the second connection piece is actually lower down. And usually that would be coming out this way, and it would be, that would secure on the side. So Nate has just looped it around that way. Um, actually, you can curve it to any way, any side you want. And so yeah. it's pointing that way. You and to unlace it and relace yeah, it. Yeah. And, uh, and so that actually helps hold it on the angle because I was wondering, would that is it preferable hanging straight down on the side or on an angle for so you? So for, for comfort, however it is hanging now, which is basically vertical, mm. almost completely vertical, is really comfortable. But then mm. when I'm walking through a crowd, it is that little bit of extra yeah, to yeah. have it holding through just for security, which does mm -hmm. stick it out a little more. Mm -hmm. Nowhere near as much as a sword belt on the waist, which is out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but it's just hanging freely. Well, interesting. When I dived in to try and find if there was any historical precedent justification for a back scabbard, right? Uh, I couldn't find a single medieval image. Oh, no, not medieval. Not medieval, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there are historical images of them wearing it. There's one from Japan, there's one from kind of later, uh, but not from the actual medieval period. But so people did do it historically, but if medieval people did, I couldn't find any medieval artwork depicting it. Doesn't mean it wasn't done, no. okay? Uh, but if it's referenced in art, that's like direct evidence right there. But what I did find was a lot of swords hanging from baldrics. Mm -hmm. And that was the closest point of reference. And I tested this in one of my other videos where I had a sword, I was on a sheath, I was just hanging from a baldric, and if you needed to just get it up out of the way, you just pulled the baldric down and it slid up into position and it was there. Mm -hmm. And so if anyone wanted to do it, 
they absolutely could have. And the justification is like, there was heaps of people wearing swords on Baldrix, and that actually enables you to do ba just kind of what you're doing here. Like just yeah, exactly just like that. Just a little bit of a different angle. But mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and so that's as much historical justification I've found for it, unless more art appears and, and, and then justifies it later on. Not that we're asking the community to please find as many of these <laughs> as we can. <laughs> if you can, send them to me. Um, but I, this is the other area. If there was some person in the medieval period, some random guy who just preferred it, it's, look, he, yeah, he very well could have done it because there is utility to it. It actually yes. does work. It does work. And so that was the whole point of me making that first video is when Tappan said it's impossible to do. I was like, no. is it impossible? And, I, and there's, there's actually, not only is it possible, there are multiple ways to do it, mm. as, as Nate has shown us right here. And as we've seen by a lot mm. of the responses to both of our videos where people are mm. like, well, actually, you can do it this way. You could, I, th mm -hmm. I think there was one gentleman, and I am so sorry, I can't remember your name, <laughs> right on the spot. There was one gentleman who had it mm -hmm. um, that he drew and threw the scale. Yes, yes. Time. I love that. He, there was another guy. Was this? It might have been the same one. He, he tied it around his back with rope, and there was a quick cord that he just pulled and it released right away, oh, and, and then he threw it. And then he, I that he is the same guy. Yes, mm. yes. It was yeah. great. I loved it. So it can be done multiple ways, and it's awesome to just see it in person, and and also you know hang out with you, Nate. It's great to great good to, to meet good you. to actually catch up. We might um, mm -hmm. actually strap this onto Shad later and yeah. see see if he can draw it as quick without clocking himself in the face. Not that I did that multiple times in practice. <laughs> also, well, actually, while we're here, because again, just to see, like, if could, could you hold this over your shoulder and hold where the scabbard would be and just kind of sure. test if you now it's it, it's blunt, but uh, it has a bit of it. So you just need to be careful and, and as a as a point. But I trust you. you you've you've used sure. swords, and first of all, what do you what do you think of the English two-hander? I always loved great swords. I love war swords. Mm -hmm. That's a really nice. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to like maybe pause the video for for three. Uh, so pause recording for three minutes while I have a have a look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have you blocked with the handle, Shad? Uh, no. I, well, actually, yeah. That, that one has gotten a bit dinged up. <laughs> I, I have three. This is the blunt one that I use when I'm going around. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> all right. So it would be from yeah, over the from, shoulder. From Oh, so first thing I'm noticing, the length of that cross guard. Yes. That, that, now that. That's, now, now, so it would actually start with the cross guard behind my head. Yes. So I'd need to do what I actually said, which is give it a slight. Yeah, twist. give it a slight. And yeah, so and you. Then it would go up mm -hmm. because the actual scabbard then sits on my shoulder. Yeah. And then to draw, not <clears> quite. Not it would quite. Need to drop to the arm. Yeah. And to really oh, Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is doable, but that's definitely not convenient with, a, with a yeah. that length. Yeah. So it might be possible, but much, much more difficult. Much more difficult. Mm -hmm. So the other thing I want to mention, because you're a, you're a part of the genuine uh, reenactment group. What was yes. your reenactment group again? So Geelong Crusaders. Geelong we've Crusaders. Got, we've got a, um, a reenactment group in Geelong, which is kind of close to Melbourne, um, where we've got both sides of the Crusades being represented as much as we can. So mm -hmm. it's not like we are just Crusaders. It's This is a horrible piece of history that is also so amazing. Mm -hmm. Let's reenact it. Yep, 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 absolutely. And so it's interesting, because when I come to medieval fe festivals like this, I know the backscabber is anachronistic, and and, and reenactment crews wouldn't uh, accept it. But all right, so the Brigandine, this is based off a historical replica. Yes. But what's interesting about this is this is the, my lighter foam one, so I can wear it. Oh. Yeah, did you not tell? Can't even tell. So you thought this was metal? Oh, no, I thought it was studded. No. Oh, oh, how dare you? How dare you? But no, like, I feel this is. That I wouldn't have even been able to tell us when it was steel plate. Exactly. So I actually reached out to Steel Mastery to make this custom for me so yeah. I could wear it all day and be comfortable. Lovely. And, and it's foam. And it so works. It works. It looks completely like you can't tell. Um, but the design is based off of, uh, I think it's the Chorkus number. Then there's a number. Okay. Uh, but um, I did it in my Brigandine video. I mentioned the one that it's based off of. And it's actually kind of, uh, it's the 14th century. And uh, uh, there's some finds in Visby uh, with a lot of Briggs and there are coated plates slash, convert, you know, when the yes, transition to... the Visby gauntlets Yes, as well. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yes. Uh, and so there's a whole number of Brigandines that um, it's based off of. But this one works really well because because of the belt and it gets the wasp thin kind of silhouette. And... Uh, yeah, and much better figure than wearing that. <laughs> well, what? It, the Brigandine is just doing all the work for me, trust me. I look very different outside of it. Um, and so that works. The the pauldrons are actually, you know, they, they, they mix and matched and they got like, you know, um, unclothed or unpainted pauldrons, and so that's historical. The tunic underneath might not be. Um, uh, what do you think? I I think it's close, perhaps a little dazzly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it looks nice. It looks nice, and it's a very comfortable. Usually, I'd be wearing my gambeson underneath this, yes. and I'd be sweating my balls off. Oh yeah, <laughs> and be, oh, uh, uh, this is like really light. But as actually, it might be more accurate than the gambeson because it's really hard to find any references of brigandines with people wearing gambesons under. Usually it's just cloth or it's mail, but there are some. All right, there are some that actually you could say no. That is an armling doublet, and yep. you, you could identify. Metatron did a video on that. 
I'd have to I'd have to have a look because some of them, as you well know, mm. a lot of the times when you find a, a piece of evidence, it may be painted a hundred years later, mm-hmm. and it may be painted in a completely different country. So you have to take it with a large grain of salt. Yeah, it's creating an anachronism around it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so. The pants might be a bit too baggy because you uh, around the time when brigandies became really popular, tight pants were the thing. Uh, I think the greaves are good. The shoes are obviously not, but that's for comfort. Uh, but it's funny. So this is kind of like my adventuring outfit that's more historically grounded than usual. Uh, and I wear it because it's recognised with the channel and the channel I deal with a lot in fantasy. Um, but when I see such historically authentic outfits, I was like, I, I feel a little out of place in mine. For, for those absolute history buffs, you'll be able to pick out the details. Mm-hmm. By all means, please pick on it in the comments because I'm going to read and fix my stuff. From it. <laughs> great, great. But hey, it was awesome catching up, Nate. It was as well. So <laughs> good luck. Yeah, we are. And, um, Everyone wear backscabbards wherever you can. They're cool. They're really, really cool. All right, guys. See you next time. And until then, farewell.